Hey, we're recording. We just started recording. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, that's gonna be good for the students uh, who couldn't make it. So yeah, how many yeah. students? And once we get into the presentation, I'm gonna explain that uh, device and what you guys are seeing. Pretty sure you guys are. Familiar with that. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.
happy to introduce to you guys Brad and Dan of All Access Life. Let's give them some, make some Thanks noise. Thanks for having us, guys. Thank you very Woo much. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So I guess uh, we'll take things underway at, at this point. It's all you guys. Perfect. So the first thing we wanted to mention is we were originally going to do our regular presentation that uh, we've been doing for the past five years, but you guys asked such amazing questions and they were so detailed. And uh, so basically what we decided to do is kind of make this more interactive. So as you guys can see there in front of you uh, on the screen, so everybody's name that's on there, those are the people who asked the questions. And Brad, he prepared his responses to those questions in the button. So all he has to do is look at one of the buttons and then it's gonna speak out his response. So he's already prepared his answers. And like I said, your questions were absolutely amazing. We had such a fun time answering them. And um, I guess right now, Brad, maybe let's go to your, um, your keyboard and I'll just quickly explain. Uh, I'm sure you guys are already familiar with eye tracking, but uh, we'll just give you a quick rundown uh, just in case. So Brad, if you want to just type a quick sentence, um, as you guys can see, there's like a little green circle, like a little clock spinning. That's wherever Brad's eyes are looking. So he has an eye tracker located on the bottom of his laptop and it's through infrared technology. It picks up his eye movements and he's able to type. So right now you can't see what he's typing because uh, the videos are blocking it. But uh, when he's finished typing, he'll look at the speak button there on the top and then it'll speak out his message. So it's pretty cool. And he's got uh, word prediction right there. Thank you all. We were so excited to present. Definitely. And word prediction has made uh, such a big difference in Brad's life because uh, back in the day on his Dynavox, there was no word prediction. He had to type with head switches. So it took a lot longer. So this uh, eye tracking technology yeah. is amazing. It's uh, totally changed Brad's life. So before we get into, uh, into all your questions, we're going to briefly uh, introduce ourselves. So I'm going to have Brad take the stage here and give you guys a little bit of a uh, backstory. So Brad, whenever you're ready. I'd now like to take a few minutes and talk about my journey as someone living with nonverbal spastic cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is caused by lack of oxygen to the brain at birth. For my parents, it was scary because they didn't know anything about cerebral palsy and weren't sure what my life would be like. I don't think they would have ever thought that I'd be giving a virtual presentation on Zoom, using only my eyes. The moment that my parents knew I could understand what was happening around me, was around the age of three. We were all watching the movie, The Fox and the Hound, when the lady dropped off the fox in the wild and left him, I started to cry. My parents knew at that moment I could understand. I'm fortunate to have a very loving <laughs> and caring family who take great care of me and who were my boys growing up when I didn't have one yet. I have two brothers and two sisters, and I am the baby of the family. Around the age of four, I was introduced to the world of A. A. C, which stands for Augmentative and Alternative Communication, which is a term that's used to describe various methods of communication that can help people who are unable to use verbal speech to communicate. A. A. C methods vary and may be personalized to meet each individual's needs. I was so happy to finally be able to express myself. As the years went on, I continued getting an education and advancing my communication at my elementary school, Mackay. The Mackay Center School educates children with motor, speech, or sensory difficulties, and they had a huge impact on my life. I had so many amazing influences at Mackay that helped me grow as an individual and helped me learn how to communicate, such as speech and language pathologists, occupational therapists, teachers, and pets. When it was time for me to enter high school, I was very scared. Yeah. The staff at Mac I wanted me to go to a mainstream high school instead of a specialized one. I was nervous because I wasn't sure how I would be accepted. I wasn't sure if I would be able to make friends or be bullied or not accepted in general. But the high school I went to, John Rennie, opened its arms to me, and I'm so thankful yeah. that I was pushed in this direction by the therapists and teachers at Mackay. I made so many lasting friendships, took part in leadership camp, mm -hmm. which gave me a huge boost in confidence, and I made so many more lifelong memories. Mm -hmm. When it was time to move on to college, 
I was mm. equally as scared because I was once again separating from the majority of my friends and moving on to college level material. I was nervous that college would be very hard and I would have a hard time keeping up. I was also worried that I would lose Danny as my aide and have to start fresh with someone else, but luckily Danny stopped by my side. Thank you, Danny. Thanks to the amazing accessibility center at Dawson, they guided me better than I ever could have imagined. They made the transition very smooth and were always there when I needed them. I also discovered eye tracking midway through my yeah. college career, which made using my computer and communicating mm. almost instant. Mm. This made school work like essays get finished in a fraction of the time. All right, Brad, thank you for that backstory. So guys, my name is Danny and I've been Bradley's aide now for 11 years. Mm. Um, to date, I'm now also his business partner and we're also best friends as well. Mm. Um, so I actually became his aide when Brad entered a high school at grade seven. So like Brad mentioned, he started off at a specialized elementary school and then he entered a mainstream high school and they wanted to have somebody who was a, a younger male work with Brad one-on-one. -on -one. And that's when I entered the equation and uh, we've literally been attached at the hips ever since uh, that day. So like I said, it's been 11 years, so it's been a long time. And we always make the joke that um, like literally I, I, we have such a strong bond that I know what Brad's thinking. Mm -hmm. I'd honestly say 99% of the time, but uh, that's not always a good thing though, to know what Brad's thinking yeah. at all times. So we do have a very strong uh, connection for sure. And um, to give you guys an example, uh, the moment I knew when Brad and I had this very strong connection, uh, it was about two weeks in, I'd say, uh, with working with Brad. I just casually strolled into work and Brad did a quick head gesture. You know, he kind of made some head movements and because he can communicate exactly just kind of like that like if you guys just saw what he did he's very good at communicating just with his facial gestures and eye movements so just off him doing that i looked at him and said oh brad there's a problem with your headrest and your mom's going to be sending me a text about it and that was exactly what he wanted to say and he would he just looked at me in shock he was like whoa like how did you figure that out and uh like i said i just noticed he looked at my pocket and he did a gesture towards his house so he, he can communicate literally just with, uh, with his facial gestures and his eye movements, and it's an amazing thing. And uh, this is how we communicate pretty much at all times. He, he never even has to be connected to his device. Um, Brad and I also started our nonprofit, All Access Life, because we share the exact same passion, which is assistive technology. Uh, since we've kind of grown with it over the years, starting from a Dynavox and moving all the way to eye tracking, we've yeah. noticed that there's so many new amazing resources coming out and they're kind of scattered all over the place. And it was impossible for us to keep up. So we decided like, Hey, if it's hard for us to keep up with all these resources, uh -huh. apps and everything that's coming out for mm -hmm. sure. Other people are also having issues too. Mm -hmm. So at this point we decided, Hey, why don't we just make the first ever one-stop shop for accessibility? And this is when we created all access life and we, created this website totally ourselves. Um, Brad actually coded a lot of it using his eyes. So uh, it's honestly, yeah. it's a technology. It's uh, definitely moving in the right direction and it can do amazing things. So we're definitely uh, super happy with that. And I guess now that was our brief intro. We're going to be uh, getting into more details uh, through your guys' questions, but uh, we'll start things off with, uh, with the questions now. So Brad is going to navigate back to his, uh, his page set here. Perfect. Okay. So first question is Jessica. Jessica asks, how many years have you had an aid? How long did it take for you to get a communication device? And how does Dan help you with your daily needs and activities? I've had an aid ever since I entered school at the age of four. The elementary school I went to, Mackay, had one aid per class. So it wasn't a one-on-one -on -one aid, but more of a general aid. It was only when I entered a mainstream high school I had a one-on-one -on -one eight, which was Danny. We started working together yeah. when I was in grade seven, so about uh, 11 years ago. Wow, yeah. I can't believe it's been 11 yeah. years already. Time yeah. sure does fly. Yeah. I've had many communication devices over the years. These are some examples of the devices I've used. A Dynavox 3100 with head switches, a Dynavox VMAX with head switches, an iPad with head switches, and now an eye tracker with a Surface Book 2. 
My first device was the Dynavox 3100 when I was five years old. Danny helps me with my daily activities, so he feeds me, toilets me, makes sure that my device is working correctly, helps me exercise, and much more. I'm really lucky to have Danny as a best friend, an aide, and as a business partner. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Brad, thank you very much for that. So, Brad, if you can uh, stop sharing here, I'm going to play the video for them that we've created. So for the next, I'd say 15 minutes, um, I'm going to be sharing a screen and I'm going to be showcasing some videos that we prepared for you guys. The first one you're really going to like, it's basically, we showcase Brad's AAC journey. So we showcase all the way when he was uh, very young. I'd say, Brad, I think you were about four years old uh, when you started your communication book. So yeah, he started off it with a communication book and now he's all the way with eye tracking and we're going to show you guys uh, the entire journey of how he got to uh, using eye tracking now. So give me one sec. Perfect. Okay, can I just get a thumbs up, Kevin, if you could hear the sound on this video? So this is Brad's low tech symbol based communication book. Brad used this form of communication as a child and it was his entry into the world of AAC. He had a personalized communication book where someone would go over the options with him by pointing at the symbols and then Brad would simply nod yes or no whenever he got to the symbol that he wanted. This mode of communication was a great intro into the world of AAC, but it definitely had his cons as well. It required someone to assist Brad at all times, so he wasn't able to be fully independent. And always having different people doing this form of communication meant that there was going to be some inconsistency with some people being slower than others, or just having a harder time at reading Brad's facial cues. Brad also had uh, some frequently used symbols attached to his tray for quick use, so things like bathroom or drink that he would say more often, he would just look at the area of his tray where the symbol was, and then the person who was working with him would know what Brad wanted. Hey guys, it's me Brad. As good as Danny is at commentating, I'll take over from here, since this device, the Dynavox, gave me a voice and was my first AAC communication device. When I was first introduced to the Dynavox I was ecstatic. I was finally able to say what I wanted and say it independently. I didn't have to rely on anyone anymore. This was great because so many times I had something I wanted to say but couldn't since I didn't have someone to assist me. The Dynavox had software that was very similar to the communication books I was used to, but now it was me navigating them and speaking my own messages. I navigated the Dynavox using two head switches, located on the right and left side of my head. These switches allowed me to scroll through blocks of options and narrow it down to the symbol I wanted. I then had the ability to speak out my message when I was done. The Dynavox also came with its own issues, one of the major ones being that the wires from my head switches plugged directly in it, which meant I had wires running along my chair, which for me wasn't good since I have spastic cerebral palsy and I would often pull them out by accident. This was very nerve-wracking since if I pulled them out, the device stopped working and this happened often. When social media started becoming very popular I was eager to be a part of it, but wasn't able to join most of them since the Dynavox was primarily used for communication only. The next device I was introduced to was an iPad. I connected to it with Bluetooth, so this finally eliminated the wires running along my chair, which was a huge stress reliever. When Apple came out with an accessibility feature called Switch Control back when I was in grade 9, I was overwhelmed with happiness. This meant I had full control of an iPad, which meant I had access to all the apps and I could finally participate in the social media movement. Social media was a game changer for me. I often don't get the opportunity to speak to the many of my classmates or friends on a regular basis, but social media allowed me to be on the same playing field as everyone else. My disability didn't define me on social media. I use social media just like anyone else, like Snapchat, Facebook Messenger, Instagram and much more. I could send messages, post status updates, upload pictures, and so much more. This really helped people see that I was just like a regular teenager. The iPad did have its disadvantages too however, I was still using my head switches which took a lot of time to make my selections and some of the apps didn't work well with switch control, so I still had some limitations. Let me introduce you to my eye tracker. This amazing, 
and I mean amazing piece of technology completely changed my life. I discovered eye tracking in 2017 and I was blown away. I was able to use a regular computer or tablet with my eyes. Using my eyes instead of head switches made a huge difference. I finally had access to everything anyone else using a computer had access to and using my eyes to navigate literally made navigation feel like it was almost instant for me. I was completely blown away. I could now write essays for school in a fraction of the time, surf the web faster than ever and use the same apps that I used with my iPad. Okay, so this next part is really interesting here. So essentially what we did is we took the four different methods that you guys just saw there and we timed Brad to see how long it would take him to spell I love green. So we started with the communication book and then we ended with the eye tracker and it's just really cool to see how much faster the eye tracker is than these other forms of communication. So check this out. Green, everyone. So as you guys can see right there, those are the results and um, it's pretty phenomenal how much faster eye tracking is than those other forms of communication. So yeah, okay, now this next part is it's the funniest thing ever. Basically what we did here is I connected myself to an eye tracker and Brad was on his eye tracker and we just had an authentic, like organic back and forth eye tracking conversation. And it was such a unique thing for me to experience as well, just like, with realizing the delays and just, it was such a cool thing. So we'll, we'll play this video and uh, it's, it's hilarious. Hey Brad. How's it going? It's going good, how about you? I'm good, thanks. Wow, that was fast. What do you think about eye tracking? Good question. It's amazing. I'm so happy you have it in your life. I'm so thankful for technology. Same. 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 Stop. Stop. 
I'm faster than you. No way. Yes. No way. Yes. No way. Yes. No way. Yes. Come over here, I got a surprise for you. No. No. Goodbye. So yeah, so that conversation was so much fun to have. And uh, we've actually done that quite a few times after that video. And uh, yeah, just it's always such a good experience. So I'm just going to give Brad a couple of seconds here. He's going to open up his page set and then we'll move on with the, uh, with the next question. Ready, yeah. bud? Okay. So the next question comes from Mary Grace. I love this question here. So it's, do you want to race me? I'm really fast. I would like that. Ha ha. Maybe one day. <laughs> So, so Brad has been doing a lot of training uh, because um, we are going to be doing a marathon next fall. So um, I'm going to be pushing Brad 40 kilometers in his adaptive jogging stroller. And then Brad himself is actually going to be running the last two kilometers in his gait trainer. So he's been doing a lot of training in the gait trainer. And uh, Mary Grace, we, we wanted to show you how fast Brad is. So we prepared a, a little video for you. As you guys can see, Brad, uh, he definitely gets moving in that thing. And he actually, uh, I'd say three weeks ago, uh, he ran his first two kilometers in the gate trainer. And that was the furthest he's ever ran. And uh, it was amazing. He did it for about 25 minutes. And uh, yeah, he's just, uh, it's, it's very inspirational. He's able to just, uh, whenever he sets a goal, he's able to accomplish it. So uh, next fall, 2021, uh, it's going to be a sight to see for sure, us doing that marathon. So Brad, uh, are you ready for the next question? Uh. Okay. Perfect. So the next question is from Josh and Josh asks, uh, what are your favorite games? Do you live by yourself? If not, then with who, and how did you meet Dan? I really like role-playing games and simulation mm -hmm. games. So I have a few favorite games such yeah. as the Sims roller coaster tycoon and many other games. No, I live with my two brothers and my mom. I met him in grade seven when he became my full-time one-on-one aide. Perfect. Thank you, Brad. So um, I just wanted to elaborate on that. So yeah, the discovery of video games has totally opened up a whole new world for Brad. He, um, he grew up watching other people play video games. So his siblings and other friends, he was never able to actually play due to uh, not having the hardware or the software. So now with all these companies like uh, Microsoft creating their Xbox adaptive controller and just other various games, creating these accessible settings, um, allowing Brad to play using only his eyes. Uh, it's amazing. And Brad is definitely an avid gamer nowadays. So uh, I wanted to show you guys, uh, there's this new game called HyperDot. Essentially how it works is using your eyes, you're this little dot and you have to move the dot with your eyes and you have to dodge other objects. So Brad got super hooked on this game. And uh, I think the highest level he made it up to was uh, level 10, Brad. Yeah. Level 10. So yeah, so we'll, we'll play a couple of uh, clips here. Um, this was like Brad's, I think, second or third time playing. Um, so you guys can see how far he gets. <laughs> level two and now he's on to level three. And the level
levels keep getting incrementally harder. So now it's, it's getting pretty challenging right now. Level four is pretty tough. So this next level right here, so this is the one that uh, stumps Brad a little bit here. He had a little bit of trouble on this one. He's very determined to beat this level. A little bit frustrated right here. But very determined. And there we go, he finally beat it. So now this next video is absolutely hilarious. So Brad and I, as you saw in our previous um, conversation there, we, we like to think, like, I like to think I'm better at eye tracking. He likes to think he's better at eye tracking. So we decided to kind of hash it out and uh, do an eye tracking battle. So there's this game called Beat Shot. And basically what you need to do is you need to collect, you need to look at these dots and avoid other dots. And whoever has the highest score at the end of it wins. So we decided, hey, why not play this game one-on-one -on -one and then whoever loses gets a bowl of whipped cream to the face. So we're just like, hey, let's give it a go. And uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll play some clips. And then uh, one of us does get whipped cream to the face here. <laughs> I wonder who it's going to be. <laughs> if you guys listen close, he's trying to distract me in the background. I got you. I got you. I'm winning this. I'm winning this 100%. It looks like I'm today's loser, and it's time for me to pay my dues. Brad really enjoyed this, guys. He had such a good time. So yeah, I'm sure Brad still thinks of that one to this day. Yeah. <laughs> he loved that for sure. So we're gonna have to play that one again. Maybe I'll get him next time, who knows? Uh, okay, so Brad, let me know when you're ready and uh, we'll get on with the next question there. Uh. <clears throat> Good to go, okay, perfect. Uh, so the next question is by uh, Kristen or, yeah, Kristen. So she says, where do you live and have you always used a communication device? <laughs> Danny and I live in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Yes, I have always used a communication device since I was five years old. Before that, 
I used a communication book with symbols, and then I would look or point at what I wanted. I'm very good at looking at stuff that I want when I don't have my device. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, like I mentioned, like a lot of the time when, whenever Brad and I are hanging out, um, he never really has to be connected to his device. I mean, he is a lot of the time, but there are also times he's not connected. And uh, we have our own method of communication. We like to call it alphabetics. So uh, we actually created this because. I think it was in grade eight, uh, Brad had to send his Dynavox in to get repaired. So we didn't have a communication device for two weeks. And that was kind of a challenge because we didn't really have a backup way to communicate. So we are just doing yes, no's. So for example, if you wanted to say he was too warm and he wanted his sweater off, he would be looking down and I'd be like, oh, is it your pants? Is it your arm? Like I'd have to figure it out and it took a lot of time. So I just said, if he's really good at nodding yes and no, why not just go through the alphabet with him? And then uh, whenever he, we get to a letter that he wants, he just nods yes. So this is how we spell. Nowadays, we literally do sentences and sometimes even paragraphs. But I always tell Brad, if he wants to spell more than one, one or two words, he has to make sure I had my morning coffee because sometimes it gets uh, to remember all these letters and stuff. It's pretty challenging. So we have a little video here that demos uh, our alphabetic language. And then at the end of it, uh, we're actually going to be quizzing you guys in the video um, we actually get you guys to see if you can uh, guess what Brad's trying to say. So we'll play this and then we get to see if you guys uh, can spell. So first off, I'm going to have Brad show us when he wants to spell a word. So as you can see, he's blinking and this means that he'd like to start spelling. Next, you're going to notice sometimes that Brad looks upwards like that whenever we're doing the spelling. And this means that the letter he wants is in the second half of the alphabet past letter L. Also, whenever Brad wants to spell multiple words, he looks downwards, and this means he wants to move on to the next word, or as I like to say, he hits the space bar. We're now gonna give you guys a couple of examples of this process in action. You'd like to spell a word? First letter, A, B, C, D, D. Second letter, A, B, L, M, N, O, B, O. Third letter, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, G, dog. Spell the word. A, B, A, A, B, L, L, A, B, L, all, space. A, B, A, A, B, C, D, C, A, B, C, C, A, B, C, D, E, F, E, a B L M N O P Q R S S A B L M N O P Q R S All access space A L M L A B C D E F G H I J I A B C D E F G F A B C D E all access life. Ew. All right, it's the moment of truth. Let's see if you guys can guess what Brad's spelling. Spell a word. L M N O P Q R S T U V A B C D E F G H I J A B C A B C L M N O P A B C D E F G H I J K L M A L M N O P Q R S T U V. So, does anybody want to give a guess on uh, what it was? You can either type in the chat or uh, say it on the audio. If not, I'll say in, in five seconds, I'll see what the answer was. Yeah, we have an answer from Courtney, timeless. Okay. And and sorry, what was the, uh, what was our answer? Uh, we got timeless or thanks. We're getting a bunch of thanks now. Yeah, yeah, so exactly, it was thanks. So good stuff. Yeah, so that's how Brad and I communicate on a regular basis. And like I said, sometimes uh, we spell literally sentences if not paragraphs, and uh, we do it much faster than that. Like whenever we're spelling, we can uh, we can fly through the alphabet. So it's uh, 
a lot of people always wonder what, what's going on, you know, when, when we're spelling, but it's just uh, the way that we've been spelling for the past 10 years now. Okay, so Brad, I'm going to stop sharing now, Brad, if you want to share your screen again. So that's it for the videos for now. So we'll wait here for Brad to share his screen and then we'll move on to uh, some more questions here. <laughs> What does it say there? So we laughed at the mosquito video. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of thanks in there. Perfect. Oh, Brad's been using the chat too. Too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So okay. the next question is from Lauren, and Lauren says, um, "How did the two of you get around together?" Actually, I can't really see if Brad's screen is showing right now, so we'll wait a couple of seconds. Bad technical difficulties? Yeah, I track it froze. Yeah, Brad is dealing right now. He he just got a new eye tracker. It's called the uh, the PCI. So I don't know if he just got booted, but he'll if, if he did, he'll come right back. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he's, he has a new eye tracker called uh, the PCI eye tracker. And uh, we have been getting some uh, glitches with it and some issues. So um, sometimes his like software freezes and whatnot, but um, he'll be back here in a second. He does have the link, so that's good. And actually, just as we wait for him, I'm going to reshare the screen here. And I'm going to play just because we are a little bit uh, crunched on time here, but I'm going to play the five W. So this is the, um, Brad and I also have a, a way of communicating. It's called the five W. So the what, who, where, why, when, how. So basically when Brad looks upwards, depending on the context of what we're talking about, um, it can mean any of those things. So I'll play the video and then you guys can see uh, it's, it's pretty fascinating. Another form of communication that we've created over the years is the what, where, who, when, why, how, or I don't know. So whenever Brad looks upwards, depending on the context and what's happening around him, it can mean any of those things. Oh, I went to this awesome place on the weekend. Where? Oh. Hey bud, how was your weekend? Good? Oh, it was good, thanks for asking. Hey, by the way, I saw somebody you know the other day. Oh. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to make it into work tomorrow, bud. Um. You want to go and celebrate our 10,000 subscribers? Mm. Well, we can go this weekend if you want. Mm. Brad, you'll never guess what I'm cooking over here. Mm. Your favorite meal, burritos. Mm. Mm. Hey bud, uh, do you know what time you're coming over tomorrow? Oh, you don't know? What can I do? Okay, perfect. Yeah, so so that was uh, the five W's right there. So just Brad, I know he's troubleshooting right now. So just as he uh, fixes his software, I'll uh, I'll answer some of these questions. I'll let you guys know what. Uh, yeah. You, oh, you're good, bud. Yeah. Okay, perfect, perfect. So I'm gonna stop sharing here. So whenever you're ready, you can share your screen. Yeah, sometimes I'm sure you guys know know this all too well uh, too. Is that technology? There are some uh, some glitches that we encounter, but uh, just push right through though. I think I think he's up and running now. Okay. There we go. Perfect. So yeah, he's probably just gonna move that on the top now. Yeah. 
Or Brad, I'm just going to answer Lauren's question just because your, your answer was uh, just like Montreal anyways. So um, Lauren, yeah, she asked uh, how the two of you get around together. No. So uh, Brad's response was, uh, Mon- uh, we live in Montreal and we have an adapted transport system. Um, it's definitely not the best system. Uh, that's what Brad wrote. And uh, I would definitely agree with that. Um, it does have its issues. A lot of the time, uh, Brad and I spend hours waiting to get picked up. Um, yeah. But, you know, like d- during this time, we, we always make the most out of it. Uh, we either work on uh, schoolwork while we wait or we work on... Zoom lot- unexpectedly quit. Yeah, yeah. Which, which Zoom unexpectedly happens. quit. Yeah, that does happen occasionally, but we're good to go now. Perfect. So, yeah, so that answers Lauren's question. So thank you for that question, Lauren. And uh, so, Brad, we're on to Kevin now. So Kevin asked, do you have any pets? Yes, I have a dog named Gypsy, and I used to have a golden retriever named Rascal, Danny. Yeah. Yes, so I actually have a little dog, Teddy, and I'll put him up here right behind me so yeah. you guys can see. If you guys can see that, but uh, he's a little shipu, and he's such a good dog. He's about six years old now, and uh, he's actually so good with Brad. Um, has lap, and he's just very patient. And Brad definitely uh, loves Teddy for sure. So we have a special connection as well. Okay, so let's move on here to Josh's question. So Josh asks, uh, what did you learn in college? I was in a program called Social Sciences. I learned many different subjects, like psychology, anthropology, geography, math, and much more. I also took classes in web design and introduction to video basics. The knowledge I learned from these courses I've applied to all access life. I can edit the website myself now, using my eyes, and even edit our YouTube videos. Yeah, so whenever Brad's taking these courses, uh, I'm also in class with him, because uh, basically whenever Brad's in school, I'm with him at all times, so it is nice whenever he takes these classes, because I'm I'm also able to gather the knowledge, so uh, it's awesome for me as well. Uh, And then, okay, now Helen, so Helen asks, what tunes uh, are you listening to lately? I like a little bit of everything. I have been listening to Sean Mendes' new single, Wonder, and a few other songs. And I don't have to say the same answer for me, too. I'm, uh, I like a little bit of everything as well. Uh, recently, I've been actually getting into classical music, which is uh, really cool. So, yeah. Um, now, Shannon asks, uh, what are you doing tonight? Watching TV and maybe a bit of studying because I have a business test on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, he's got a, he's got a test on Tuesday. <laughs> so he's going to have to do some studying. <laughs> but it's better to get it over with early on instead of keeping it to Sunday. <laughs> okay, now Shannon asks, uh, who is your best friend forever, your BFF? I have three, Downey. My other best friends, Tabby and Karen. Yes, there you go. Um, Helen, she asks, um, what is the best thing you've ha- had to eat lately? Enchiladas. I'm a big fan of Mexican cuisine. And for myself, it's going to have to be the All Access Life Burger, which is right here behind me. Uh-huh. So, um, like last month, um, this company, this local restaurant called Natura Boeuf de Grasse, they actually selected Brad and I as the, their heroes of the month for everything that we've been doing for All Access Life. So uh, they actually allowed us to make our own burger from scratch. And as you can see uh, here, we got some onion rings on that burger, which is Brad's all-time favorite food. He loves onion rings. I know if there was, uh, if he was stranded on an island and there was only one food he could choose, uh-huh. it would definitely be onion rings. We oh, also okay. tossed on some guacamole down there, if you could see. And uh, yeah, it was just a very unique mm-hmm. burger. We got to sample it uh, maybe a week or two ago. And uh, yeah, it, was, it tasted amazing. It's not every day you have guac on a burger. So that was a unique experience. Yeah. But, uh, it was really good. We definitely enjoyed it. And Shannon asks, uh, what do you like to do for fun, Brad? I like to play video games, go on social media, and hang out with my family and friends. 
Um, yep, I would say uh, exact same answer for me too. I'm a big gamer, and uh, it's uh, I mean I like to play games independently, but it's also amazing playing games with Brad because uh, we play together in such a unique way. Um, he he has those two switches, as you guys can see on both sides of his head. That's where we put the switches, and then he's able to use those two, and I use a controller, and together we play as one controller basically. So it always makes for a hilarious gameplay. Just as an example, uh, whenever we play FIFA, which is a soccer game, I control all the buttons except for shoot. So Brad's main job is to shoot. And it's always amazing because I can get our player right to the net and then Brad has to shoot at the perfect time. So we have to like work together as teammates, you know, to, uh, to make it work. And it's, uh, it makes for an amazing experience. Uh, okay, now Helen asks, um, what did you like most about school, Brad? I liked the social aspect of school, hanging out with my friends. Yeah. I also loved going to leadership camp in high school. Uh, yeah, leadership camp is definitely an amazing yeah. experience for sure. Um, now, Helen also asks, um, have you seen any good movies lately? No, I'm more into TV shows than movies. My favorite TV show I've recently seen is Speechless, which I'm sure many of you have heard of before. And if you haven't, definitely go and check it out. Definitely, yeah. It's an amazing show. Um, now we got another question here from Shannon. Um, so Shannon asks, um, what if you woke up and found out that you were the only person left on Earth? How would you feel? Great question. I would probably be sad because I love having other people to socialize with. And that would be my answer exactly. It would be uh, very different not having anybody else to speak to. So I'd probably just spend my time searching for somebody else. Um, now, Nehemiah asks, um, what is your favorite thing uh, slash equipment that you've tried out? This is a hard question because I love every product that we tried out. But I have two favorites. The Josie Jogging Stroller and the Xbox Adaptive Controller. Danny. Yep, I would definitely have to say uh, it's a toss-up between those two. Um, but I would say the Xbox Adaptive Controller um, would nudge out the, the victory on that. Because like I mentioned, uh, just gaming opened up a whole new world for Brad. And uh, it's, it's an amazing thing to witness. And especially see games become more and more adaptive. So the future is definitely bright for, uh, for adaptive gaming, for sure. Uh -huh. Uh, so this one here is from Vicky and Vicky asks, um, have you ever driven a power chair or played power chair sports? Yes, I have a power wheelchair, which I drive with head switches and I have played wheelchair curling with my power chair, but I found it hard because my power chair wasn't fast enough. Yeah, very true. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. He has these two uh, switches on both sides of his head. Yeah. This one's left turn. This one's right turn. And when he pushes his head back, that's how he drives forward. And to stop, uh, he has to take his head off. So yeah. it, is, it is pretty awesome to witness. Yeah. Um, now, Maggie asks, um, what, have, what have you two learned from each other? As educators, um, what can we do better or different when working with our students? This is another great question. Um, I would say it all boils down to patience. When I first started working with Brad, um, I definitely had to get used to uh, the duration of time it took for him to get a sentence out. Like for example, um, he was back, he was on the Dynavox when I first started with him. So just to type, hi, my name is Brad would take him about five minutes. And I wasn't used to that. So a lot of the times I actually thought I was helping by finishing his sentence, you know, cause sometimes he's typing something and I try to like help him by finishing it. But if anything, that even creates more frustration because I'm most likely guessing wrong. So it's always really important to just allow the user to finish their sentence when they're trying to guess what they're typing and uh, just, just having patience overall. And Brad, what, what would you have to say on that? Like Danny said, have patience when it comes to us working on our devices. I always get very frustrated when people assume what I'm thinking or finish my sentences while I'm typing. Letting us fully explain what our needs are is very important. We are all unique and everyone has specific needs. Another very important thing you should consider as educators, and even for therapists, is to follow our lead and ask us what works best for us. I've seen educators and therapists 
try to implement a black and white curriculum, but in reality it's important to find the gray area and adapt the material slightly for each student. Yep, well said, bud. Um, now, Kevin K. Uh, so, Kevin asks, who is better at video games? Brad, I'll let you answer this one first. Ha ha, definitely Danny, but only because he has had more experience playing them. <laughs> now, I will have to give Brad some credit. He's only been gaming for about two years now, but um, there are some games, like, for example, this one game, Dive Kick. It's a two-button game, so Brad has those two head switches, so we're literally on the exact same playing field. In the game, you can either dive or kick, and then whoever gets kicked first then uh, loses. So it's really cool because there's no advantage anywhere. It's literally he hits the left one and hits the right one, and I, I have the controller hitting A and B. And uh, he's beat me a bunch of times. If anything, he's actually probably better. So we have a couple of videos on our YouTube channel where we, where we play this game back and forth, and uh, it's always a toss-up, whoever's going to take the win on, on, uh, on that game. Uh, now, Kevin K, he asks, um, how has being in quarantine changed the way you guys interact with one another? Um, now, we did have a video prepared, but I'll just quickly explain it. Um, I can actually split, sum it all up into one word, which would actually be Zoom. We've done basically so many Zoom hangouts, and we had to find new ways of interacting and hanging out. Um, we've basically been attached to the hip, like we said, for 11 years, um, seeing each other four or five days a week. So yeah. when this whole pandemic started, um, it was a big change for us because we obviously kept our distance. So for, I would say, what was it, Brad? Five months? Yeah. Yeah, so for five months, we didn't see each other at all. So we just hung out through Zoom. So it was tough. It was a big change. Um, we're very thankful that Zoom exists and we were able to still hang out this way. But um, definitely wasn't the same as interacting in person. Mm. But, uh, like I said, it's just amazing. Zoom has opened up a lot of doors. Like, uh, if it wasn't for this discovery, we wouldn't even be here presenting, you know? So we're, we're very thankful for this opportunity and uh, for this platform as well. And Brad, what would your, uh, be your response to that? We still hang out in person from time to time, just definitely not as often as we used to. We plan on opening up an office space this year for all access life and going back to hanging yeah. out on a more daily basis. Exactly. Yeah, we plan on having a, an office space soon, so fingers crossed that that, uh, that happens. Um, Charlie says, um, who have you met along your journey that uh, has inspired you? I have met Lucula Zelegs Pedley, who is one of my idols. He is a disabled break dancer who uses crutches to move around the dance floor. He's been on The Ellen Show and many other big stages. He also does motivational speeches and is very inspirational. He actually lives in Montreal, so I've met him a couple of times. He lives his life by the motto, no excuses, no limits. I would highly recommend you check him out. So yeah, if you did want to check him out, because uh, sometimes Brad's device doesn't have the best pronunciation, yeah. it's uh, Luca Lazy Legs Patelli. He's, uh, he's a break dancer and uh, he does phenomenal things. So very inspirational guy. Uh, Kevin, just to make sure, are we good for like five more minutes? Yeah, okay, perfect. Uh, so then Charlie also asked, um, is there something that you haven't accomplished yet, but hopefully will in the future? I would like to star in a TV show or a movie. But my dream is to be on Ellen with Danny. Yes, definitely. We've always had a dream to be on the Ellen show, so... Uh, we're just going to keep on pushing with all access life and keep the ball rolling. And uh, who knows what the, the future has in store. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now Kristen, she asks, um, Brad, I've seen some videos with head switches and some look like you're using eye gaze. Which do you use the most and why? I prefer using my eye tracker because I am a lot faster communicating and things on my device. Eye tracking has opened up a whole new world for me. I can join in on an active conversation and play video games on computers. And now Kristen asks, do you find eye, uh, using eye gaze fatiguing? No. At first it took some time to get used to and build up my eye muscles. But after a few sessions my eyes were like the Hulk. 
Yeah, so Brad has Hulk eyes right now, guys. Mm. Very strong. Mm. Uh, okay, now Kristen asks, what type of device are you using? I have a Windows Surface Book 2 and an eye tracker from Toby. <clears throat> yeah, so like I mentioned, uh, he has a Surface Book 2 laptop. And the reason why he went with a laptop as opposed to uh, a tablet is because uh, a lot of the programs that Brad uses are very demanding. He does a lot of editing for videos and uh, Photoshop. And a lot of the time, tablets, they can't run these programs. So Brad got a Surface Book. And the cool thing about this laptop is you can kind of flip the screen and turn it around and then put it down and it kind of turns into a tablet. Um, and then we just put an eye tracker on the bottom. So we had to get everything custom built, but now Brad is able to edit videos and edit pictures and uh, it's amazing. It's a very powerful device and uh, I'm sure he absolutely loves it. Mm. Um, and he also does have the new uh, PCI tracker from Toby Dynavox, mm. which he's still getting used to. Uh, uh, the big thing about this eye tracker um, as opposed to his old ones is that this one actually works outside. So you can actually use eye tracking software outside, which is very exciting because um, when, the, when the sun's shining, the, the old eye trackers don't work outside, whereas this new one does. So we, we still haven't tested that out, but we actually plan on testing that out uh, in a couple hours time. So we'll, we'll let you guys know uh, how it goes. Um, now, Kristen asks, what do you think is the coolest thing that you were able to review and what item do you think everyone should have? The coolest thing that we have reviewed and that I think everyone needs is the Xbox adaptive controller. Uh, yep, and I would definitely have to agree with that. Coolest thing uh, that was ever created. We actually got this controller uh, the first day it came out. We did a video, a product review on it, and that video completely blew up. It went viral. We have 1.3 million views on it. Um, and there's definitely um, a high interest in seeing this type of gaming and uh, it's just a super popular product. So that kind of kind of launched our career and uh, really got our YouTube channel off the ground. So we're very fortunate for that. And uh, the controller is just amazing. We, we still use it to this day. Um, now, Jess, she asks, where did you get the idea for the website? So just very briefly, in a nutshell, um, again, Brad and I were noticing all these amazing products being uh, created at a very fast pace this past decade. And they were kind of scattered all over the internet and they were just, it was so hard to keep up with what was available. So we just decided why not make our own one-stop shop website that kind of showcased everything neatly into one site. So uh, we, we spent a good two, three years making this site. We were honestly, we were arguing over what font size to use. Like it, it was hilarious when we were making the site, but uh, all that hard work paid off. The site's up now, and uh, we're actually launching a new site on February 1st. So you guys should uh, check that out as well. And the last question here from Anthony, he says, uh, he's asked, how old are you? So Brad, I'll, I'll let you answer this one first. I'm 24 years old. And I'm 30 years old. Uh, and this is why our journey is so unique, because uh, when I started working with Brad, I was 19 and he was 13. So we were both teenagers. So we were able to develop this, uh, this strong bond. Um, it was a little bit difficult because we were like such good friends that I also was an authority figure as well. So I had to find, I had to draw the line somewhere, but, uh, yeah, it's, just, it's amazing that we're so close in age and that we share the same passions. Yes. Yeah. So that's uh, pretty much <laughs> PS4. PS4 is better. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, uh, that is pretty much the presentation right there, guys. Um, like we just said, we're going to be launching our new website on February 1st, 2021. We're also going to be doing uh, an adaptive giveaway where we give away so many adaptive products. Some of the products, just to mention, um, we have these wheel blades. So they're adaptive skis that fit on your wheelchair. So it allows you to go through the snow. Um, so I don't know how snowy it gets there in Philly, but um, if it does, it gets snowy. Yes, there we go. So those would be a cool product it's awesome. to potentially win. Uh, we also have some adaptive musical devices and a bunch of other stuff. We're still kind of uh, gaining stuff as we go. So on February 1st, Brad is going to be doing the giveaway using his eyes, spinning a virtual wheel. So uh, if you guys want to check that up and sign up, it's free. And uh, yeah, you have a chance to win some uh, amazing adaptive products. Oh. So that's it, guys. Thank you very much again for all your questions. It was amazing and a lot of fun to, to do this. Mm -hmm. Let's, uh, oh, Brad's working on a message. Have a good day, everyone.
Thank you. Thank you. Let's unmute ourselves. Let's uh, share our videos. Mm -hmm. Give a big thanks to Dan and Brad Hi. for an awesome presentation. Yay, thank you. 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 We really appreciate your questions. This was definitely a lot of fun for sure. If you guys ever want to have us back, we're more than willing. Yeah, when yes. everything gets uh, yes. back to the new normal, you know, we definitely want you to come visit us, you know, once. For sure. Happened. So. And this was Great. also our first ever uh, Zoom presentation too. So uh, it went uh, it went very well. Great. It was amazing. Great. 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 It was amazing. Thank cool. you guys very much. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Very nice to meet all you guys too. Yeah. <laughs> so much perfect getting a lot of love in the chat too so. yeah yeah i'm reading, we're reading the chat right now i just yeah. opened it up and at one time we had about 70 people in here so. oh wow yeah that's amazing yes thank you so much thank you very much for all your kind uh -huh. brad are you able to stop your um, screen sharing for a second just so you can see everybody i don't know if you're Yes. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, good luck with the launch of the website. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're very excited. We have somebody working on, uh, like Brad and I, are, like we're amateur website developers. So we actually have a professional working on the new website and it's going to be fully accessible to everybody with uh, various disabilities. And that was our biggest issue is that um, Brad and I, we, we kind of lack the knowledge and experience to make the website fully accessible. So the new website is going to be accessible for for everybody. So so we can't wait for that as well. That's great. Yeah, we, we've been watching your videos this week, and I know a lot of classrooms have been watching them. They're they're great. They're funny too. So we enjoy. You guys got a good sense of humor. Yeah, well, we we appreciate that. Yeah, we we try to throw some humor in there as well. You know, make the videos fun and interactive and engaging because uh, that's that's the best way to reach an audience for sure. And I just wanted to introduce to you, he's actually right next to me, Tom Quinn, our president. Um, and this yeah, is our, our community here of HMS, all our HMS students and teachers and therapists. And you're now a member of this community. So thank you <laughs> so much. Well, it's a pleasure. Well, thank you guys very much for, for allowing us to be uh, part of this community. Yeah, we, this is great. I really want to reach out. We're, we're looking to really add to technology, not just with dealing with what we're dealing with now, but going forward. So having this connection with you guys is really exciting. Look forward to talk with you more. Definitely, yeah. Right, right back at you as well. <laughs> Give it up for Brad and Dan one more time. Oh. Oh. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys. Wonderful Thank you. job, gentlemen. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. See you guys later. Take care, everyone. Bye. 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 Very nice to meet all of you. <laughs> you too. It's nice to finally meet you, you know, not yeah. via email. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, to meet, well, I guess face to face in a way, right? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So thanks. You guys have a great weekend. I'll talk yes, to you Yes, you too.